Welcome to The Author's Journey with number one international best-selling author and in-demand publisher, Rebecca Hall Greider. Today, we'll showcase the works of an amazing best-selling author, find out the story behind their book, and explore ways to bring your message powerfully forward. Now, here's your host, Rebecca Hall Greider. Welcome, everyone. We're excited to connect with you on the author's journey as we have powerful conversations with best-selling authors, and they are willing to pull back the curtain and share authentically about the journey with us. So as we are looking at bringing our messages forward, whether it's in writing or it's in speaking or whatever way we're called to bring our messages forward, we get to learn from amazing experts what they've learned along the journey. So welcome. I'm excited to have you joining us today and I want us to take a moment and slow down a little bit we get so busy doing everything on the to-do list running around I want us to give ourselves an opportunity to be to breathe to breathe in through our nose out through our mouth like through a straw beautiful and just take a moment to catch up with yourself As we pause and we become fully present, it helps us actually be open to receive so that we can come alongside you and pour into you, support you on your journey. So be willing to be fully present, to take a breath, to catch up with yourself a little bit. And in that stillness, when we pause for a moment, it actually gives us the ability to hear more clearly. Perhaps a message that, in in that still quiet voice that's been trying to reach us, we've been too busy to listen. So I encourage you to pause for a moment and just connect in and listen. This time is for you. This is a time where we are coming together and connecting in with you, mind, body, soul, and spirit to support you on your journey. So you get to receive, you get to be And that is enough during this time. So take a breath. Enjoy all that beautiful oxygen as you become present and open, ready, and excited to receive all that our amazing guest has to share with us. So let me introduce our amazing guest. His name is Patrick P. Long. He is a father and widower, born and raised in St. Louis, his wife passed away, his, li- his wife Melanie passed away from breast cancer in 2019, which led to him writing the book that became a number one international best-selling book, Ordinarily Extraordinary. As a single dad of four children, he rejects pity and finds inspiration in the extraordinary community of all of those around him. And he has learned to not just survive, but is committed to thriving. And he wants that for you, too, that we have an opportunity to step forward, to observe and appreciate the ordinarily extraordinary around us and lean into thriving. Please lean in and warmly welcome the powerful Patrick P. Long to the show. Welcome. Thank you very much. It is awesome to be here. I appreciate the opportunity. We are thrilled to have you joining us. And I'd love for you to take a moment and share why. Why did you feel led to write your journey, to write this book? And it's fairly, you know, quickly after her passing away in 2019 that you brought it forward in 2020. And I know it's touched many, many lives, but when you're getting ready to bring it forward, I'd love to know what helped you, what encouraged you, um, what finally helped you bring it forward. Um, You know, there are so many things. uh, there's no just one or two. I, I wanted to be a writer my whole life, and it was a lifelong dream. I'd actually written two books before. This was the first one I actually published. But, um, you know, the first and primary motivation, I think, was my kids. And I, I wanted to leave them something more. I wanted them to know more about their mom and me and, you know, lessons learned in life. And I wanted that to be just real and 
you know, very realistic. I didn't want to paint a picture of trying to act like we were these great, perfect people or had a perfect marriage. So, yeah, I really revealed a lot of stuff very honestly that I feel like, you know, especially if they get older, it can help them in life. But even as I started to write it, and even start, before I even actually started to write it, just making notes, thinking about that, I realized how much that could help other people, you know, as part of my grieving process, you know, all these reasons and more. Um, you know, it's something I just wanted to kind of leave behind, I guess, called a legacy and, and, and share that story of our lives together and, and what we went through and towards the end of her life. Um, yeah, and I just wanted to share that with the world. You know, my kids sense that you know, the world beyond. Yes. Thank you. Thank you for sharing and that desire to bring a legacy forward to share authentically um, about your journey and about both of you and relating to each other and as you're facing um, those those final days and the illness, um, the, the breast cancer that she was battling and your willingness to pull back the curtain and share that, not just with your family and your children, but with the world. I know this book has, uh, when I read it, it touched my heart and my spirit, I I laughed, I cried, I felt like I knew you both personally for um, having the opportunity to read this book, and it deeply impacted me. And as I've talked to others that have read this book, that has been a similar um, experience to that, that they have had as well, that they laughed and they cried and they were um, deeply touched. And I know there were moments in the book where you share uh, very personally, you even have this whole um, scene when the emergency personnel are coming and you were helping her get uh, dressed so that she had some clothes on when they came and you brought the wrong pants and she wouldn't put those on <laughs> you needed to have the correct <laughs> pants for her her to put on so I, just these little touches that you share so candidly and openly um, are deeply impactful and I'd love to know because we have a lot of writers that are listening today your thoughts around knowing what to include or not include how did you make some of those decisions you know, I think a lot of it's gut feel. I think part of it is, you know, I realized to be real, you know, it, it needs to incorporate everything. And, and one was, um, there, there was a lot of humor in our life. You know, we, we both had good sense of humor and really enjoyed laughing together. And, you know, I wanted to show that. I wanted to show the reality. I didn't want to try to be too dramatic, you know, and, and act like everything was all serious all the time. Because even in very serious moments, sometimes we're laughing. And, and, you know, what's really a funny side story about that is one of my very first editors who read the book actually wanted me to cut that out because it was right at the beginning. And she was like, well, you want to, you know, really get into the drama and touch their heart before you start trying to be funny. I'm like, well, I'm not exactly trying to be funny. It's just what really happened. And, you know, just knowing to include that, um, I'm like, I just thought to myself, I understand what the editor is saying. There's no way I'm going to cut that. That's what really makes it real. It shows how real we were and what we dealt with. But, you know, then also what to include. I mean, again, that was part of, you know, the humor, this, that, but also just being willing to just, I, I consider myself an artist as a writer. And I think one of the first things about an artist, you have to be ready to bear your soul. And just knowing you know, there were parts in this book I really got deep into some personal issues and thoughts and feelings I had in, in just times of overwhelming stress that were very negative, very kind of dark. And, you know, I was scared to share those things, but I realized the power of them to a degree. And, and I just thought those things have to be shared. You know, like, you can't be afraid to share some, some of these things I was afraid to share. I, in fact, some of the, mm-hmm. the really dark things I shared, I, I deleted two or three times and then kept thinking, no, that really needs to be in there. And being willing to just put that out there and, you know, just show all aspects and not hold anything back. Um, And and some of those things I was scared to share are actually the things that have resonated with people the most. It's it's kind of amazing. Mm -hmm. I thought could almost make me look like a jerk or the things people are like thanking me for putting in there. And I keep hearing from people things like, you know, I'm glad I'm not the only one who feels that way or, you know, so... Um, don't be afraid to, to, to let it all out and uh, that makes it a lot more powerful when you do 
Thank you for sharing that really, really powerful information. We are getting ready to go to our first commercial break. And as we do, listeners, I want you to to take in some of what he shared about being willing as a writer to bear it all, to share it all, um, being open to that, letting people in. And the, some of those moments that he, w- he took out several times and then put back and listened to where he was called to share, to be open, were some of the most impactful so really, really powerful share. As we, as you enjoy these two minutes, I encourage you just go a little bit deeper, process what he shared. And when we come back, we'll be continuing our conversation. Talk to you in two minutes. Announcing a powerful new TV channel featuring programs designed to enhance and transform your life. Make powerful connections, one program at a time. And by doing so, we can bring transformation to the world. Tune in each week to Empowered Connections TV as we add new programs to help you make empowered connections of your own. Visit EmpoweredConnectionsTV.com. That's EmpoweredConnectionsTV.com. And make the most of an incredible life transformation. Have you friended us on Facebook yet? Why not? Just go to Facebook.com forward slash Voice America or search for the keywords Voice America. Once you are part of our Facebook network, you'll receive daily messages about what's happening with our shows, this week's featured guests, and new happenings at the Voice America Talk Radio Network. And you can add your voice to the always active discussions on our timeline. Just go to Facebook.com forward slash Voice America or search for Voice America. Rebecca Hall Greider's Speaker Talent Search is looking for speakers wanting to get on more stages. With just one audition, you could open the doors to hundreds of speaking opportunities, reach more people, and expand your impact. Finalists get to audition live in front of leaders looking to fill all kinds of speaking opportunities. Apply now at SpeakerTalentSearch.com. That's SpeakerTalentSearch.com. We look forward to hearing your message. Streaming live, the leader in Internet talk radio, voiceamerica.com. Welcome back, everyone. We are talking with the amazing Patrick P. Long as he is sharing some of his journey as an author and bringing his book forward and some of the powerful things that he learned along the way. And I loved his powerful share in the previous segment about putting those things in, being willing to bear your soul, be willing to really share. And the other thing I appreciated about what you shared, Patrick, was that even though you had an editor, you had someone advise you to take that segment out in the beginning, you decided to really feel in and honor what your kind of writer's voice was calling to bring forward and to keep it in any way. And then that scene ended up being so impactful for so many people. Um, so I love that, that you were willing to take in input and insight and then really feel in, own your story and your book and just dis- make those decisions. So I'd love for you to know, uh, I'd love for you to share. That's the better way to say it. I'd love for you to share um, how you, um, we're able to feel in and determine what to leave in and out because you mentioned that a little bit. There were sections that you um, were uncomfortable sharing that ended up being so impactful for people you'd taken them out. But then when you really felt in, decided they needed to be part of the book. Same thing with the direction you got from one of the editors that that needed to be in the book. How did you determine, yes, that needs to be in or no, it doesn't? Yeah, I think the thing that drives you the most is you got to, like, in one word, you got to remember story. You know, this was a mm-hmm. story. You know, it's a memoir, but it, it's written, I consider it literary fiction, is what I like to say. And it reads like a novel. It's not, it's not mm-hmm. you know, it's not kind of a, just a dry rehashing of events. And you, you realize, I'm telling a story. Make sure you're always telling the story. Um, you know, it, it's easy to get off track and start sharing more thoughts or, you know, just almost kind of, you know, rambling on or <laughs> different things like that. But you got to remember, I think the number one thing I had to keep in mind is what's telling this story 
and what isn't. And, you know, like there is, for example, there is uh, 14 pages near the end of the book that I was kind of rambling on about my community. Not really rambling. I mean, I think they're important thoughts. They're things I want to share with people. But I ended up cutting out 14 straight pages of that, you know, after talking to a couple, getting some feedback from some readers, talking to an editor. Um, and it, it's because it wasn't really driving the story. As much as it was all great, deep feeling, sometimes something that's important to you or you really want to share, if it's not really contributing to moving the story forward, sometimes you got to let those things go. And, you know, part of the thing I, I talked about that you know, I didn't listen to my editor on that one thing, that one, that one part about the pants and the humor, but, um, but uh, many other parts I did. You know, it's, it's a give and take. In the end, it's your work. Mm-hmm. You know, but you got to be true to yourself, true to the story. You know, you got to remember, like, no matter how important or how deeply you might feel something, you know, if it's just side stuff that doesn't contribute. Um, and even, you know, I had a lot of flashbacks and backstories in there about, like I mentioned earlier, about things that were very personal to me that, you know, kind of made mm-hmm. me look bad or things, but they were relevant to the story. They put into perspective the events that were going on why we reacted the way we did, why I felt the way I did. And so that when it's relevant to the story and it's continuing to drive the story forward, that's the stuff I would keep. If it, it was kind of rambling about some point I wanted to make, even no matter how deeply I felt about it, but it wasn't moving the story along, those were more of the things I was cut. Okay. Beautiful. Thank you. That's just a really, really great direction because your book is, it just carries you along. You can't put it down. It's so powerful. Um, But it's good to know some of what went on behind the scenes in determining what to keep in and what to keep out. So that really making sure that the information you keep is driving the story forward. It is bringing it forward is really, really great advice. I'm curious also in your journey, were there things that surprised you either in the writing or the editing or the publishing or the launching were there any surprises along the way um that you'd like to share um probably quite a few i mean so it was just surprising like i mean i kind of like i think in the writing of it almost learned more about myself and what i felt and i think sometimes i was almost mm. surprised by that you know and then also surprised very much especially more, I think, less from the writing itself and more from the aftermath of uh, after publishing it and starting to get a lot of feedback from a lot of different people. I mean, I I, I kind of mentioned this earlier that I think some of the things that I thought were going to make me look the worst um, and just make me almost look like a jerk were things that were actually people are really resonating with people. And, you know, it was amazing to me. I felt it, and obviously I wouldn't have published it. I felt it was a very powerful story, a good story. I thought people would find compelling, but I've really been surprised, and it's because of being so, you know, raw and revealing about myself, um, even the things I was scared to share, how much it's touched people. Like, I just, I'm kind of blown away by how deeply people are reacting to it, and how much they're, mm-hmm. and, you know, and, then, and the other thing is then people sharing their stories with me. I'm, I'm kind of amazed mm-hmm. how open people get with me. <laughs> um, mm-hmm. you know, I'm not, I've never been the type of guy people just sit there and open up to. And now they do. Now people, because I guess they saw how honest I was and this and that. Like, I'll have people I, I don't even hardly know. That, you know, I'll meet somewhere if I move around the book, and, and they'll sit there and share stories with me about their own lives that just blow me away. It's just amazing just realizing how mm. many people around you just have these powerful, powerful stories to share and how much they're willing to. Mm. Thank you for sharing that. So powerful. Um, And I'm not surprised, actually. You know, I felt like I knew both you and Melanie by reading the book. Like, I felt this connection and closeness. So I could see that being a safe space where I would want to lean in and share um, some of my life journey as well or reflect on it. And you... Um, are very uh, your book creates such a connection it creates this safe space to look at those things and to talk about them so I love that that's that's been your experience and that you're creating um, a way for people to go deep to explore those things to share and and that has just an endless impact that it can have in people's lives that's so powerful I love it now when the, this book was released and you did your first book signing, I know it was in um, 
the COVID was just kind of <laughs> getting underway and we were trying to figure out and you did um, a book signing event um, in the summer, if I remember correctly. And I'd love for you to share a little bit of how you guys were able to uh, navigate those waters and, and make that work and kind of what that was like to have a um, your first book signing. Yeah, that was a tough one because um, it was an in-person event, and we, and in the planning of it, you know, there was a lot of questions of what can we do, what can't we do, and you know, it was in June, um, so things had kind of been going on for a little bit by that point. But even as we're planning, and we're, you know, back then, everyone was still wondering, you know, when's this going to end? <laughs> mm-hmm. But you know, obviously, we had to take all the proper precautions of people wearing masks and you know, social distancing. We had to make it an event that was just kind of in and out. It was kind of like, come through a line here, you know, kind of flip right through, you know, get your book signed, talk, and, you know, leave. And ideally, we would have liked it to look a lot different. I mean, it would have been nice to have more of an open event where people could just hang out and talk and maybe address the crowd at some point or, you know, different things like that. But we couldn't do any of those things. We had to just make it kind of a come through the line, get in, and, you know, go out. But, um, it was also, I think, a little disappointing because there wasn't as big a turnout as might have hoped for. But, you know, you got to deal with that. And, you know, probably a lot of people weren't coming out because of, the, you know, the COVID and all the other things. But, um, but you know, it was still a great event. Um, it was a really mm-hmm. terrific event that, you know, a lot of different people showed up to. And so you know, a lot of people were coming to get books signed and had actually already read it. So I was getting a lot of that, that feedback, even on that day, people just sharing things with me. And, you know, it was really touching. It was very emotional day too at the same time so it mm. turned out to be a great event just looked a lot different than we would have expected yeah yeah. Well, I love you sharing that because there aren't um, a lot of authors that I have talked to that um, had that experience and, and can share. And I love that you were able to pivot and find a way to still um, do a book signing, even though it looked different. And it sounds like there was a, a lot of meaning in it and connection, even though it was a little more in and out <laughs> than had ideally right. um, been planned. So I love that. And I'd love for you to share um, about your book. Is there um, something that you really hope? I know a lot of it was um, creating a legacy and um, sharing your lives so that your children would have that, um, know you both um, in those moments on a, on a different level. Um, are there some other things you were hoping would happen or an impact you would hope happen by bringing it forward where there are some um, goals and things you kept in mind as you were letting the power of the story choose the things you know the things that move the story forward include those in the book but were there things um, outside of that that you wanted the book for um, touching people's lives passing through their hands and hearts to do some goals that you had for the book to achieve yeah, I would say there was, um, certainly, you know, we, we are connected with the American Cancer Society and Camp Kessum, which is a camp for kids who have a parent with cancer, and it, it's a phenomenal organization, and I wanted to support those organizations and spread the word about those organizations even more, you know, uh, raise awareness, different things like that. Um, it's also kind of an evolution, actually, because while I had goals like that and other goals in mind, um, and I'm also donating a, a percentage of all the proceeds from the book to those organizations as well, ongoing. Um, mm-hmm. But also, um, it, it's been kind of an evolution. It, I think since the book came out, because of the feedback I'm getting, I, I have been surprised that it touches people much more deeply than I was expecting. And people keep telling me how much this can help people and help others. And, and that's the evolution that I think, more now, more motivated now to really try to get it out into people's hands and get it in front of people because I'm hearing so much feedback about how much it's touching people, you know, and how, you know, how much, how much it's helping them and just touching their lives. And I, I actually have a, an old friend, the old friend of the family is actually more my brother's friend. He went through a lot of substance abuse problems and things like that. And he actually got so inspired after he read my book, that he had started kind of trying to write a book about his story a while back. He got so inspired by mine, he's now actively finishing up and editing and trying to publish his book mm. on his story. And, you know, and when I see and hear stories like this that are impacting people that deeply, 
that it's motivating them to do things and improve their lives. And just a lot of the comments and feedback I got, it, it keeps making me more determined to want to get it out there because I, I do think it can benefit a lot of people. Mm, thank you for sharing that. And I love that it's continuing to keep that um, fire in your belly to continue to keep it moving forward to help it reach as many people's hearts as possible. Um, I love that you're committed to doing that and driving that forward. Any thoughts that you have or a piece of advice for our writers, we're getting ready to go to our next commercial break. And as we do that, I just wanted them to have something to think about. Uh, so I love that you're um, I think it was your brother's friend was motivated after reading it to bring his book forward. Do you have a piece of advice or tip for people who are thinking, well, someday to bring it from a someday idea to today to taking action? Any tips on that? I mean, I think the number one tip that pops right in my head is just write. <laughs> just <laughs> keep writing. You know, in, in, in any way, shape, and form you can. You know, you don't have to be sitting there writing the perfect text of whatever. You know, just Whenever you're out and you're having thoughts, you know, like jot them down, you know, keep, keep your notes, keep your thoughts, you know, you're surprised how many ideas, like even during the time I was writing the book, I'd be out doing something, I'd get an idea and I'd realize, oh my gosh, I should say this in this theme and it would be so powerful and I maybe wouldn't write it down. I'd think, oh, I'll remember that. And then the next day or that night I'd sit down to write and I'd be like, wait, what was that to hit me? Because I can't remember mm. it. And then the point is just keep getting your thoughts and your ideas down you know, down on paper and don't, you know, don't just don't stop writing. You know, even if it's just crude stuff, it's just notes and ideas for later. Just keep them flowing. Beautiful. Thank you for sharing. Oh, listeners, as we go to our next commercial break, I want you to think about some ideas that are popping into your head that you have that you are wanting to bring forward or as he was sharing an insight, an aha, something that will be supportive of you in bringing your message and your book forward. So take a moment, just write down some thoughts. That's a great reminder. Don't don't trust that we'll remember. It's good to write it down <laughs> and keep that flowing. And with that, we'll look forward to talking to you in just two minutes. Rebecca Hall Greider's Speaker Talent Search is looking for speakers wanting to get on more stages. With just one audition, you could open the doors to hundreds of speaking opportunities, reach more people, and expand your impact. Finalists get to audition live in front of leaders looking to fill all kinds of speaking opportunities. Apply now at SpeakerTalentSearch.com. That's SpeakerTalentSearch.com. We look forward to hearing your message. Voice America programs are now available on your favorite connected device, including Amazon, Alexa, and Google Home. Through streams with Apple Podcasts, TuneIn, and iHeartRadio, listening to your favorite show is as easy as saying the show name followed by the word podcast. Hey, Alexa, play Finding Your Frequency podcast. If that doesn't work, try adding on TuneIn or on iHeartRadio or on Apple Podcasts. Announcing a powerful new TV channel featuring programs designed to enhance and transform your life. Make powerful connections one program at a time. And by doing so, we can bring transformation to the world. Tune in each week to Empowered Connections TV as we add new programs to help you make empowered connections of your own. Visit EmpoweredConnectionsTV.com. That's EmpoweredConnectionsTV.com. And make the most of an incredible life transformation. The Internet's number one talk station. Number one talk station. VoiceAmerica.com Welcome back, everyone. We've been talking with the powerful Patrick P. Long. And really pulling back the curtain and, and learning about his journey and advice and wisdom and tips that he can share with us on our journey, what we can 
how we can bring our books forward, how we can have them be impactful. And I love the reminder of just keep writing. <laughs> I was thinking about um, Dory and Finding Nemo, you know, just keep swimming. Like you just keep going. You just keep writing and capture those thoughts and the importance of writing it down, not just trusting you'll remember later, um, I think is really, really great wisdom and advice. Now, I would love for you to share with our readers how they can go deeper with you. How can they connect with you? How can they get a copy of your amazing book? Um, what are the best ways? Uh, the best way to get the book would probably be to go on Amazon and search. The title is Ordinarily Extraordinary, uh, Patrick P. Long. If you just go on and search, um, you can find it. But also to connect with me, um, there's a few ways. But the simplest way, kind of the hub of it all, is I have a website. Go to my website. And my website is just patrickplong.com. So don't forget the P in the middle, <laughs> patrickplong.com. And if you go there, there's social media links at the top and bottom of the pages where you can connect with me on LinkedIn or follow my page on Facebook or um, Twitter as well. Um, also, on my website, there is a um, alert or a newsletter called a Get Alert um, that you can sign up for and get on my mailing list. So, you know, anytime anything new is coming out, any new project I'm going to be doing in the future or events or speaking, anything like that, you know, you can be on the list where um, you know, information will get to you. Um, so those are the best ways to connect. But the book's actually available. Amazon's the easiest way, but it's available anywhere books are sold because it's registered in all the distribution channels. So you go to Barnes & Noble or anywhere else and get it as well. Wonderful. Thank you so much for sharing. And is it what formats is it available in? Uh, it's as an ebook and as a paperback. So um, you can get it in okay. either of those formats. Perfect, perfect. So those of you who love Kindle, <laughs> those of you who love right. um, paper or what I hear people say sometimes, book books, <laughs> um, you can get it in both formats, which is great. Um, well, thank you so much for joining us today. I appreciate it. I appreciate you sharing so candidly and openly with us. And I do have one final um question I'd, I, or, or thing I'd like to bring to the, the listener's attention because we talked about this one time and I realized we didn't talk about this earlier in the show. Your cover, there is something really special and unique about your cover and how why you selected it to be the um, image that people see when they find your book. Can you share just a, a brief moment about your cover? Yeah, so the cover is we're in St. Louis, and my wife got her treatment um, at Barnes Jewish Hospital. And there's a within there, there's a group called the Siteman Cancer Center. It's regarded as one of the top cancer centers in the world, and that's where we're going for all our treatment. In the last few weeks of her life, she was having strokes, and we were in and out of the hospital, mostly in the hospital all the time. But um, that. Um, that that's a view of Forest Park in St. Louis, which is right across the street from the hospital. And that photo is actually the view I had um, from the room, the, the kind of the last room she was in. Um, right, actually, right before she went to ICU. But some key scenes that are in the book um, happened right there. And there was a waiting room right at the end of the hall where I was sitting, where I was on the phone with some people when we were getting some of the the news that things were going downhill with her. Um, so that, that those, I actually describe that exact scene in the book talking about overlooking that park because that park is actually where American Cancer Society holds their, they call it their making strides walk every year. In fact, it's, it's, it's every year in October, which is Breast Cancer Awareness Month. It's coming up in about three weeks. But, um, you can actually, there's pathways in that view, um, that are actually the paths we do that walk on every year. And so mm. <clears throat> I was talking in the book and describing that exact scene, that view. And when we got to producing the book, um, the cover designer had, read, had just read the book and was like, we need a photo of that scene. That should be your cover. And the moment she said it, I was like, oh, that's, yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Mm. You know, that would be perfect. And so yeah, to, to, when you read the book, you'll, there's a couple of scenes that talk about that exact view and what we're looking at right there. Beautiful. Thank you for sharing. I just, I felt, I knew there was so much thought that had gone into your cover. I wanted to make sure that we um, shared that. And what an amazing opportunity we have to share the view 
with you, um, both literally and um, figuratively. So um, thank you again for uh, spending time with us today, letting people know how they can go deeper and connect with you. I appreciate that. I wish you continued success in uh, reaching as many hands and hearts as possible with your powerful book. Listeners, I want you to really take a couple moments after the show and for you and really think about what is a view, what is a story, what is something you are being called to bring forward. And we are always happy to lean in and support you, to have a conversation, to be able to help you bring that book forward, bring that message forward. So don't be shy about reaching out. We are here to support you and help you connect with amazing resources to to bring your book forward. And with that, I hope you have an amazing week and we will look forward to our next conversation on Monday. Take care, everybody. Thank you for tuning in to The Author's Journey. Please join Rebecca Hall Greider for another edition of The Author's Journey podcast every Monday on the Voice America Variety Channel. And until we talk again, use some of the tips and inspiration from today's show to guide you as you lean in to bringing your message forward. 